Hello, and welcome to Sports Bike Comedy Meet the Ravens. We're joined here by a very special guest, a regular friend of the show on Sports Bike Comedy, but in this new light, new texture, we're out here to talk to him about his industrious rugby and sports career in general. The very own vice president of the Rockford Ravens, Mr. Taylor Sites himself joins us. Taylor, how are you today? Great. How about yourself, Steve? All oh, living the dream. We're so happy you're here to discuss your amazing and very long sports career. Uh, we're happy to hop into it, learn all things about Mr. Sites. What a beautiful background that you provided for us. Um, while we do this, and look at you, you're all like you're all dressed up out there playing yet golf. Is that true? Yep, got done playing, just got done playing golf. Wow, wow, what an athlete! Just out there constantly playing different sports. Um, I believe he was on the volleyball court yesterday. Can't testify, I was there? I um, was, I was, I pulled my, pulled my hamstring. <laughs> wow, what is it? Play through injury, of course, like he always does. What an absolute stud, Taylor. Let's take it all the way back. So I'm, I'm assuming, like most uh, lads out there, did you start with uh, some soccer, some, some baseball? What, what kind of yeah. got you going in the sports direction? Definitely, I, first sports were so or soccer, baseball, or like probably very first. Before I started playing hockey, the, that was my pretty much my main sport. Um, I did play soccer until high school. I wasn't very good. There was no reason I was on the team. I definitely won the bench. <laughs> but uh, my, my high school had a really, really good soccer team. Nice. Nice. So, so, put it in. Uh, oh, you're cutting um, in now. And rugby. Yeah. Taylor, you're cutting in and out there. Can you. Uh... Oh. Here, let me, let me get off my line. Yeah, maybe maybe they'll have better symptoms inside the house. Um, bear with us, folks. Okay, oh, there you go. Yeah, there it looks go. good. Yeah, it looks pulling, real good. I'm pulling a, I'm pulling a AJ Hawk. <laughs> Heck yeah, love it. <laughs> anyway, you were saying your soccer career um, was maybe not as great. No, definitely not as great. I just push kids around. I should have played defense in my <laughs> side, but I played. I I tried to play stri striker, and so. I think I only scored a goal in all of my high school and lucrative soccer career. Heck yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, hockey was my main sport. And then rugby, I started playing my sophomore year. And I've played as long as I haven't been hurt. I've been playing. Nice. So what's, uh, what's one other thing you like, did during the high school that you still do today uh, besides, uh, like, any type of sporting? Um, I like to cook. Big cook guy. Yeah. I like to I like to cook. Um, love the party. Like to cook. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. What would you say um, is your is your best dish that you could cook? My best dish. Ooh. Um, I have a couple really good ones. I have like this uh, teriyaki chicken I make. It's really good. Oh. Very easy. Very simple. Easy ingredients. Cheap too. Can eat off for a few days. Super healthy. Um, I also have some really good pasta dishes. Really? Really good pasta nice. dishes. Not a look of Italian in me, but I can throw down in some pasta. Oh, and my uh and my famous chili that everybody calls soup, but <laughs> but you think it's pretty awesome. All right. Well no, fair yeah. enough. Good to know that you got them cooking skills. Probably uh why you're uh, you're soon to be a married man. But we'll get into that a little bit soon later on. Let's uh continue on to this sports career. So Soccer, not to take it. You did have some brief football experience, right? I played American all year. football. That is. Uh, American football. I played all year, eighth grade. Nice, nice. Uh, hockey was, like I said, my main sport, and those seasons always kind of overlapped. So I, I ah. you know, I don't regret anything, but I will say, like, if I could go back and do something different, I would play football in high school. Yeah, you think it would be fun? Yeah, I was a, I was a little slot receiver. Actually, in eighth grade, yeah. I played. It was funny. In eighth grade, I actually played nose tackle and DN, which is comical. But is funny. yeah, We're, my uh, eighth grade football team, our offensive line in eighth grade was average like 6'3", 280, 290. Just a bunch Jeez. of we were, yeah, I grew up in a small farm town, so just all a bunch of corn fed big farm boys. <laughs> that is some, some big boys. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so anyway, um, but you mentioned hockey was kind of your main sport. You played goalie there. 
Played goal. I played everything. I wrapped wow. anything with hockey. I played definitely uh, – goalie was probably my best position, but I got a little bored with it, especially towards my, uh, like, high school years. And then I started skating out a little more. I'd play a higher up level. I'd play goalie, and then in another one I'd skate out. And then I did win uh, – we did win state my senior year. Um, I actually played goalie for that. And then wow. – uh, uh, Let's see, I made Team Wisconsin that year as well, just for our level. There were kids who were way more phenomenal than me. Wisconsin hockey was great, but I loved it. It's one of those things now that my uh, knee is back together. I'm very much looking forward to playing uh, hockey again. I've taken a couple year hiatus, and I think I'm going to give it a shot again and playing some men's league coming up here this fall. What an athlete. Got to stay active, active this guy. Uh, well, speaking of which, all these – Athletic genes sent into you. Um, the senior Mr. Sight had quite hit himself a sports career as well. Is that right? Yep. Him and my dad both played in the MLB. My dad played for the Brewers for like a quarter of a season. Uh, oh, he man. went. To, he went. He went to UW Milwaukee, and they, he got invited to come out and try out for the team. He played some minor league stuff, and then that's right when Vietnam was happening. Then he joined the Marines, and that was the end of his uh, baseball career. Now my uncle, he played first base for the White Sox for six seasons. Wow. Yep. And then he was uh, up until he passed away. He was a scout for the Diamondbacks. So big baseball family. Baseball, not my sport. (laughs) Was your father disappointed whenever he realized you were not a baseball player? Uh, No, not disappointed. But being my dad, being the dad he was, he would coach me. I mean, he was he was a coach father. So I mean, I it would be fun get out in with hockey games, and you know, I'd get in the car, and before we could even talk about. Even if I had the best game of my life, he found something wrong, and we were talking about the wrong things before we talked to the good ones. I sit there, I'm like, man, you can't even ice skate. Who are you to tell me about how I can play hockey? <laughs> but no, he was he, he was on it. He was on it. He's he always loved, I mean, he, still, he still loves coming out to the rugby games all the time. It makes his day. Absolutely, it's always great to have uh, Mr. Sites out there, the senior one. Um, so, so definitely one of those guys that kind of pushed you to to some of your more uh, athletic greatness, would you say? Oh yeah, we we were going to me and all my brothers except for my middle one. Um, for the most part, all had my one brother. He played linebacker for Michigan. Uh, my other brother, he still to this day runs marathons. He's working for an Ironman right now. My dad ran marathons up until his brain aneurysm in his late fifties. He was still running marathons. So wow, yeah, wow. So a very athletic family, quite impressive. So at long last, um, hockey was definitely a nice uh, nice sport that you found uh, rugby and. Yep. That ended up being the main one, huh? Yeah. Well, I lo- I actually I grew up watching rugby. My cousin, she played on the women's team in Whitewater, Wisconsin, and we would drive up because we lived in about hour forty five minutes to an hour away. We would drive up and go watch all of her home games, and then I would go to the after parties with them. They'd put me up at the bar, you know, when I was like three or four. So I was watching college rugby when I was in. So one day, as my sophomore year of high school, over the announcements, like, hey, if you're interested in playing rugby, come to this room after school. Called my mom and it's like, yep, gonna play, uh, gonna play rugby. She said, okay, and then boom, played ever since. <laughs> That's cool. Um, who, uh, as far as that initial team that you started out with or practicing with, who's uh, who's still around that we might know about? Uh, I'm blessed to be playing still with uh, two of the guys I actually started playing high school rugby with, uh, our very own Sven Casper and of course our wonderful Skip Grinnell. Ah, okay, cool. When did uh when did Sydney the truck join? So Sydney joined while I was playing in college. Okay. Uh, I remember he his first tournament was a uh, was Lakefront Sevens actually. I played for played for NIU during the day and then I came played for uh, the Ravens afterwards and we actually won Lakefront that year for social side. Sweet. Yeah. That sounds like it was a good team. Yeah, it was. We we were very very stacked. My uh, NIU, we put ourselves in the competitive bracket that year, um, because we thought we were hot shit, and we got just destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, so going back to to uh, your initial rugby experience, uh, you get to your first practice. Uh, who, who's the coaching staff there? What's that looking like? Um, some very some of our really close friends, uh, fathers. A couple are still around. He had uh, Walt Felton, of course, who runs our women's team now. Vince O'Connor, 
Um, Sven's father, Steve Casper, another great guy named uh, Steve Bunk. And then you also had Tom Beck, all very, very, very prominent rugby old boys. Um, my first ever practice, I was there for all of 30 seconds. And Vince O'Connor came up and poked me in the chest and said scrum half. And that's pretty much what I've played my entire life until I started playing a little bit of fly half. But nine is still my favorite position. You do have a, a way of delivering that ball. Quite a, quite a strong pass on it. The old, the old sight spin. <clears throat> little pepper. A little pepper on it. So high school rugby with the Ravens was your first experience. Um, yep. move, moving on from there, you mentioned NIU. Uh, but kind of a fun story of how you ended up on that team, huh? Yeah, I kind of just showed up. I went to a college in the same time as DeKalb and kind of just showed up, started showing up to practices because one of my best friends, uh, my fiance's cousin, he was living in the rugby house. So I just started going to things and then one day they're like, Taylor, we need to see your NIU identification card. And I was like, I don't have one of those because I don't go to NIU. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was able to play in pretty much all the non-conference games. Um, I did play some conference games, but not many. But they very much, uh, I very much appreciate all those guys out there. They let me play rugby. I practice every single day with them. Uh, right. I traveled on tournaments with them. And they made me feel very much like I was just a part of that team. So, I mean, Kudos, shout out, played some quality, some of the best rugby I ever was able to play it. Uh, great guys, lifelong friends. Excited to see a bunch of them next weekend. Well, actually, this Friday at the uh, USA Romania game in Chicago. It'll be good seeing them all. Absolutely. Uh, one friend of the show, actually, sports by Compion, Mr. Cedric himself, was on that powerful NIU college team, correct? Yep, he was. He was a freaking unit. <laughs> Still is. Still is. <laughs> I mean, this was back when Tiger was working out twice a day, so uh, I imagine it was, uh, it was quite, a, quite a guy. Yeah, still a what unit. He can, he can still ball if he wants to, too. If he wants to, Cedric, God damn it, come out of retirement. You're too young for it. Anyway, um, Taylor, so you fit, wrap up at IU, come back to your wonderful, beautiful Rockford Ravens. What, uh, what do you see? Who's there? What uh, What's the situation like? And um, how was it? You know, I uh, I waited a year before I went away to school. So I played with the team in uh, 2011, the men's team. I played with them a full year before. Hold I went on, real away. quick. Which is your top berry? So, like, if you're picking between the berries available, like such as raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, what would you say is your favorite berry? Strawberries. Big strawberries, strawberries, strawberries. Move, you know, they got that right texture of strawberries. Actually, right? you know, but also bright. on top, they are really good, but I would say like a close second, I do like elderberries quite a bit. Elderberries are quite delicious. Yeah, they're really good on uh, Swedish pancakes. Yes, they are. Yes, real, they real are. Real quick, would you say Swedish pancakes, superior, best pancake out there? So I have a weird answer to this question. So hmm. my family um, is very German. And my my oldest brother married a woman who is also extremely German. Her parents came straight off the boat, Germany. And um, that's my sister-in-law, Lisa. Love her to death. She is a freaking amazing cook. Her mom actually owned a restaurant pastry shop in Frankfurt, Germany, before they, excuse me, Dortmund, Germany, before they moved to the United States. And so she taught her how to cook. So my entire life, I've been being raised with German food and one of their specialties is they have a German pancake which is like a cross between the Swedish pancake but like almost it's a little thicker like a buttermilk it's almost like this buttermilk Swedish pancake hybrid what yeah dude and they are just I've never had a they're my favorite pancakes in the world like I oh my literally, god that sounds great yeah it's like nothing nothing can compete no pancakes anywhere can compete, especially like sometimes she'll get a little fancy with it, throw some fruit or like some chocolate chips in them. And they are just freaking, she makes her own syrup too. Like she throws wow. down. Yeah. Wow. That yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah. I'll get you some of them German pancakes. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I got, we got to get some German I know you're, pancakes. You're, a big, you're a big breakfast guy. So big breakfast guy. You got to try out these German pancakes myself. Um, anyway, we got off topic there, but real, it was important stuff we needed to cover. No, it's okay. I liked it. Yeah, so getting back on to what we were talking about, about you coming back to the Rockford Ravens and uh, that kind of stuff. What were you saying? Oh, I came back there. Our team was great. Super good team. Yeah. Our now coach, Paul Jens, was still playing. Uh, oh, he, yeah, you know, Rich Foster, our lovely president, was still playing. Uh, I mean, that team were just a bunch of guys that, you know, it was cool. Our high school team was really well established. 
And like I grew up playing with Skip, so his older brother after practice, he would they would always ask, "Hey, you guys, you you ones, they picked us out." And they're like, "You're gonna stay in practice with us too." So my sophomore year, you know, probably probably more my junior year, I really started, especially when Skip was a senior. Um, I stayed after every practice that I'd have our practice, then I'd go practice with the men. So you know, they all saw me grow up from when I was just first starting to drive at 16, end up playing with them for years. Uh, you know, Rockford always has had a very much of a strong family vibe. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> got, got one of your friends right now drawing your attention. Well, uh, uh, my, my lovely fiance <laughs> just walked in the door. Oh, how lovely. Of course. With a bottle. With a fiance herself, Mrs. With Aurora. Bottle. Uh, yeah, Rory, you want to come say hi? Uh, I'm, I'm doing Steven's podcast right now. Oh. We're, we're doing uh, we're doing an actual yep. interview yep. with the Ravens. Here she is. Hi, Aurora. Hi. Hi. Sick background. Yeah. Thanks. We are, uh, yeah, we're doing the Taylor interview, so it's very important you show up as his better, better look at half. Um, anyway, so, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, tell us about that, Taylor. Soon yeah. to, to be married man. How is, yeah. uh, how's that been? What, uh, tell us a little bit about the love journey. Oh, it's uh, great. It's great. My uh, lovely fiance also plays rugby, too, so she understands being away every Saturday. <laughs> she understands wanting to have whiskey every single night. She drinks like me too, so. Perfect. <laughs> as she walked through the door, as she walked in through the door with a bottle of Makers, so she she knows how I like. <laughs> but uh, but no, she's awesome. We're super excited. We move into our new place in uh, two weeks. So. Wait, where'd you guys meet? We met in college at NIU. Wow, great times. A rugby yeah. party, I assume. Uh, no, her older cousin Riley, one of my best friends. He now lives in Hawaii. He runs a nonprofit okay. down there. Super awesome guy. Uh, me and him basically moved in together. That's the reason I went to NIU is we kind of went down there together. And um, I went to Kish, but you went to NIU. And like we lived together every single year. And uh, her freshman year was my sophomore or my junior year. Yeah, my junior year. And uh, me and her were the only people that we hung out with in our group real close that weren't 21 yet because I have a February birthday. So uh, all the guys were always going to the bar. They were 21. And so me and her would just – kick it so we started out as friends and we were friends forever until we started dating and just the rest is history look at that look at that what position does she play we're gonna uh, have to get her on for an episode so she plays she her, her favorite position is eight she loves okay. forward more than backs even though a lot of people try to throw her in the back line is she that because care. forwards do all the work and she knows it and wants nah. to be involved <laughs> she goes she screams yeah she heard that <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. Um, well, anyway, Taylor, we'll let you get to your fiance and your beautiful dinner here. We just have, um, yeah, just I guess your thoughts about the season so far of the Rockford Ravens, of uh, these 2024 Ravens, maybe your hopes for some of the younger guys. Uh, we just saw one of our a very young player win the MVP. And yep. uh, yeah, what are your what are your hopes for the future? And of course, the fall season is coming, Taylor. What are, I know what are, it's going to be. You know, after missing the fall season, that's the best season last year with my ACL injury. Um, I'm, A, extremely excited to be back. Uh, I miss it more than anything. It sucks sitting on the sideline watching the boys play. Uh, I will say, though, I'm, I'm excited. But it was great to have you there supporting the boys. We appreciate always, it. Always. Um, I'm excited. I'm, waiting. I'm excited to see a lot of the younger guys step up this year. Some of them have really kind of taken uh, leaps the last few years, and it's going to be nice to put – um, everything together. I think as it's going around, I'd love to see more people out to practice, but you know, that's D3 rugby in a nutshell. And every single one of our D3 teams for the most part kind of goes through that. Um, we have some wonderful additions of some quality veteran players that come in this fall. So uh, very, very, very excited to see how they kind of intermesh with the team we already have. I think it's going to take us to new levels. They were some position players that we really needed. Yeah. Uh, so then we got some young rookies I'm really excited about that are uh, we got some new guys out there that I'm really excited to kind of start seeing them play the game. And it's wonderful to get people who aren't almost 30 on the team. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we need some more of them. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you have some hope then for the boys going into this fall season. I do. You know, it's every, we, there's a lot of good teams. We play on a lot of excellent teams with excellent rugby players. I mean, I think we are so blessed with the rugby community we, that we do have. Um, whether it's D3, D2, D1, I mean, there's players I know at every single level, and it's always um, just so fun seeing them. You know, every week there's somebody I know on every single team because I've been playing them all since some of them high school. And uh, it's just great, the rugby community and 
the, all the friendship that is had, you know, on top of the competitive nature as well. Yeah. Um, but we are very, very blessed as a rugby community in our area with how close we are with a lot of uh, players on other teams and things like that. It's like, if you want to play rugby, there's somewhere that you can play rugby every single weekend in our area. And yeah. uh, there's not a lot of areas like that. You know, I think the Chicagoland area besides California and Ohio has, um, I mean, I don't know which specific order, but they have one of the largest communities in the entire country. Yeah. And you don't have to travel like crazy distances like you do with um, in some of these other states to, yep. you know, well, to play a different team. Yeah, when Aurora lived out in Vegas, she was traveling almost four hours every weekend. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of these states have to travel very far for games, so we're quite yeah. blessed with that. And you, Taylor, in particular, are quite popular amongst many different teams. Um, a part of that is the touring the touring part that uh, the Rockford Ravens do every four years. What are some of the countries you've been to with these Rockford Ravens? I have been. I have played in Austria, Germany, and then the last one was Scotland. And then next nice. year, we have a couple different options. We're looking at one tour. We would go to uh, Argentina, Peru, and Brazil. Ooh. And then yeah, that one's pretty exciting because the amount Argentina is such a large country. So the amount of time it would take to just fly to all those three major cities um, would definitely be an option. Uh, New Zealand is back in play from what I've been told, which, I mean, who doesn't want to go? I mean, it would be fun to go to New Zealand, but, you know, I mean, sure. we, could probably get, we could probably get beat by their U14 teams over there, just slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to play against Carl Midgerson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, and then the back the backup is, I don't even want to use the term fallback because it's not, it would still be awesome to go over there and play rugby with the England. Yeah. So, you know, whatever, it's always, I tell everybody in rugby, if you ever have an opportunity to go on a tour, you, you've made friends for life once, yeah. once you go. And it's just such an awesome experience with the rugby community wherever you go. That's what's the beautiful part about the game. You can get up right now, move to any city in the world. They got a rugby team, you instantly got 20 friends. For sure, for sure. And we did mention that some of these are a little bit far. It's probably going to be worth it because you really will find a great community right around you. It's what I did when I got here, and it's all worked out pretty well. Yep. Ready anyway, people. <laughs> Taylor, uh, we really appreciate you coming on um, and talking to us about your industrious sports career. Do you have any final words for Rockford Ravens fans, sports by Compions fans, humanity at large? Uh, no, I just say, uh, you know, if you are interested in playing rugby, play rugby. Even if you've never played before. I get so many people, ah, man, I never played before. So, you know, I don't think I'll play. Most people don't play until they're adult anyway. Get out there. Go watch a game. Get in. Go support your local rugby team. It's worth yeah. it. Yeah, I'll add to that. Yeah, even if you're not going to play, just go support it. Hang around the community. Chances are they're a bunch of good people. <clears throat> yeah, true that. Anyway, shout out to Taylor. Shout out to the Rockford Ravens. We're out of here. All right. Appreciate it, Steve. I will see you.